Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel here, and this is part four of the How to Rebuild Your Diesel Engine series. We're going to be discussing how to install your piston packs and how to clean the block deck getting ready to install the head. Some of you may have been wondering, uh, you know, I was uploading videos uh, about every two days, and what happened? So my son was born, and unfortunately, for the channel's sake, that kind of knocked me out of making videos for the last month. Um, I will be uploading more videos here in the future, just letting you know what's going on with that. And um, also, unfortunately, this is going to be the last part of this series for now, because I was off work for a week due to the birth of my son, and that kind of slowed down the rebuilding process, and I just, I didn't have time to upload the videos and make them and edit them. So... The next C13 I'll be rebuilding, I'll be doing the last parts, the cylinder head, things like that. So it might be a little while before we finish the series, but I'll still be trying to get videos out. Before I get into the video, I wanted to say thank you to Lois, Kenneth, and Lee for donations this week. So before you put your piston packs in, you'll want to clean the liner area sealing surfaces as well as the deck on the engine block and you see your crank journal down there do you see the yellow ring there right above the lip that is where the o-ring seals and you want to really clean that properly and it's a good idea to look at your camshaft and lifters as well so all your cylinders are out now you can clean the deck after you put the cylinders in but it's it's better to do it before, it gives you more room, and you're not gonna be getting any of the dust and debris into the cylinders. Now always wear safety glasses, a dust mask, and hearing protection while I do this. Uh, a lot of guys don't do the hearing protection or the dust mask, but it's a good idea. Now I like to use a right angle die grinder here. Uh, it's easier on the wrist. Also, I use these Rolock uh, little Brillo pads. And I find they do a really good job uh, cleaning up the surface to how I like it. Now, some guys use wire wheels. Some guys use the little, um, I believe they're also called Rolock wheels, that have the fingers that come in green, yellow, or white. And I've used those as well. But I, I just like these, uh, these brown little Brillo pad. Um, they do a good job. And what you're doing here is you're not really trying to remove material. You're just trying to get the block back to a flat, even surface and get all the material off of it. So give you a little quick shot here. And then after you've done the whole deck, it should look like this. Uh, there should be no high spots, low spots. You can put a, uh, a straight edge on it if you want. You can see I've cleaned the ceiling areas as well. Um, you can use a... A, uh, a, they make round Brillo pads that are good for doing that. Um, and it's good to cover your crank journals while you're doing it. I've removed the rags over this crank journal because we're going to be putting the cylinder packs in. And that is what the deck should look like after you've cleaned it. Now getting to your cylinders here. Uh, this is going to be cylinder 3 and 4, as you can see. I've labeled them. And the C13s and 11s only have a single liner seal, unlike the C15s. There's no upper expanding band as well. Now, these use the fractured rod style. You can see it's a rough surface there. Sorry, the sun's getting in the camera here. And you got your bearing tabs. And do not try to switch these rod caps. Since it's a fractured rod style, you will damage the rod and the cap, and it'll be unusable. Now, these come with new bolts in the pack, and you're going to want to put uh, the molly denim and engine oil mix on the bolt threads as well as under the head just to lubricate the bolts uh, you don't need to you know, have it dripping off just enough to lubricate the threads and then what you're going to want to do uh, just looking at the rod cap here you can see that there's a forward side that has a little hump in it that is the forward facing number one cylinder and the bearing tab goes to the right side of the engine block which is the exhaust side now get into your o-ring seal here you want to use this uh it's called tire soap or rubber lubricant is what cat calls it um what you're going to do is you're going to put that on the seal itself and it's basically a soap um, or a vegetable based oil and then we're going to push it in with this liner installer here okay so we have your clean engine here and we're going to be installing cylinder number three so you're going to be putting the cylinder liner as well as the piston pack in all at once. 
And really the only thing you need to worry about lubricating is the O-ring sealing surface. And you're going to use, like I said, that tire soap, or as Kat calls it, it's a rubber lubricant, which is actually a little thinner than tire soap. And that's pretty much what you put on all of the, uh, the liner seals, except for on the 15s, the top filler band you're going to put oil on. But this is a C13, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, a lot of guys like to put the upper rod bearing on before they put the cylinder pack in. I do not. And you'll also see that I have bare hands while doing this. I like to leave the upper bearing off and then put it in on the bottom side just because I've had them fall off a lot or pick up dirt or, um, you know, I just, I don't like have them hang in there while you're trying to put this back. And I've had them just fall off too many times. And the reason I'm using bare hands, even though I always try to use gloves, is because I find I get a lot better grip with bare hands than with using gloves. Now I like to put it in like this. I'll set the liner there and then take a look. You want to make sure that your connecting rod is lined up with the crank properly. Um, and then you want to put it in very slowly. As slow as you can. And then it'll kind of guide itself in. And then you want to release slowly. Um, and then you're going to push it in with the liner installer. So you'll see it's up about maybe a half of an inch. And you just use a head bolt, doesn't matter if it's an old one or a new one. And then all you're gonna do is center this bar here for the liner installer. And you don't have to run the head bolt in all the way. You don't have to put a lot of force on this. Just, you know, maybe 10 turns. And then you're gonna push down once and it should pop in. And make sure that that, never put those liners in dry. Always make sure that the O-ring is lubricated. And it's popped in. Now, as you can see, number four has already been installed, and you do them in pairs just like with removing them because your three and four crank journals are in the same position. Now, you'll want to have the crank journals face down as well to help facilitate putting the bearings in. So, our crank journals are down. I've cleaned the bearing journals off with solvent as well already. Bearing tab is to the right, which is the exhaust side. And you can see I have not had the bearing in yet. But this is where I'm going to be putting the bearing in. So you can see that's the one I just put in. That is number three up there. And I'm going to be putting the bearing and connecting rod cap on right now. So we have number four. And rod bearing is not on yet. And as you can see, um, it did no damage putting it in without the rod bearing yet. Um, as long as you go slowly, um, you'll be fine. So we're going to get our rod bearing. And we're going to put that white assembly grease I've been using on the main bearings in on the bearing side, but not on the back. The back is always dry. So, got a little oil on the back. Try to clean that off. You never want to have oil or debris on the back side because it changes the... Uh, it basically pushes a gap between the rod bearing and the rod, which you don't want to do. So, I just roll it over and then push it up into place. And then I pull the rod bearing down onto the crankshaft. And the rod bearings are universal. The uppers and the lowers are the same, unlike the mains. So we have our rod bearing and rod installed. Now we just have to put the cap on with the lower part of the bearing and then torque it. So, we're going to get our rod cap now. And we sh are going to apply the same assembly grease, that white assembly grease, to the bottom side of the, uh, or the bearing side of the rod bearing. And remember that little hump I was talking about? That faces forward. And we're going to push the rod cap right up onto the crank. And then hand run the, uh, the bolts in. Just like that. And you have to really make sure, well, there's really no alignment. There's no alignment pins or anything on these uh, on these fractured rod style ones. Um, you just make sure that you put them on by hand. Don't just, you know, run the bolts in with an impact um, without making sure they're lined up properly. You shouldn't really be able to tell where the, where the break point was when they're in contact. So as you can see, I'm putting them up by hand. I'm feeling that there is no, um, no lip between the bottom and the upper half of the rod bearing. And then I just run these in by hand. And you really wanna make sure that the, uh, 
the area between the rod cap and the rod bearing are not full of oil or assembly grease or anything like that because that can get in those little uh, grooves between the two parts and uh, it could possibly damage them. So just make sure those components are clean while installing them. So it is now on, except we have to torque them. Now these torque to 95 foot pounds. So I like to go right here and torque them and go back and forth and check them a couple times. Now after you torque them to 95 foot pounds, I will torque stripe them. And then we're going to torque turn them, similarly to what we did on the mains. And these torque to it 95 like I said, and then they torque turn an additional 60 degrees, which 60 degrees is one flat. So I'm going to torque stripe it now. And this just tells me, okay, this has been torqued, now it's time to torque turn it. So, uh, same as with the uh, the mains, I like to use a half inch impact here and torque turn it. Now you can do these by hand um, if you wish, but I don't know anyone that does. Pretty much everyone uses an impact. And we're going to torque turn them with this impact. Okay, they are now torque turned, the 60 degrees, and then I'll torque stripe them after they've been turned. So that is how you install your rod bearings and your piston packs into the cylinders. Um, not that difficult as you can see. The C15s, same thing, except they have uh, four rod bearing bolts opposed to the two on these. Um, and they have more cylinder liner seals. They have, uh, they actually have four. So the, uh, the one on the and three lower liner seals. So this has been properly torque turned. You can go ahead and torque stripe them. And that is what you do on all six of them. So getting back to our deck, we have installed all six. And you can see I've put these uh, these bolts with these big washers on. The reason I do that is while you're rotating the crank to do the other ones, sometimes it'll push the liners out of their ceiling areas and you have to push them back in, which makes me nervous. But that is why I do that. All right, all done.